Hello, everybody. Welcome to Live at Five. It's Tuesday, August 28th. I'm Beth Stevens. And I'm Ryan Lee Gilbert. And we are here with Miss Caitlin Moynihan. Oh, she's ready. Hello. Oh, I was ready today. <laughs> she made a little heart. <laughs> Aw. That was beautiful. And I'm super excited because we have a very special guest today. Who do we have, We Ryan? do. We have Mary Lou Henner joining us in a little bit. From Amazed from getting, getting the, the band, band back, back together. together. Ooh, Look at that. Ooh, that was nice. Yes, we're loving it. Very but exciting. First, we're going to do our top five. We found out who's going to be helping bringing this iconic comedy from screen to stage. That's right, Mrs. Doubtfire, a seminal movie, especially yes, my seminal. childhood. I think yeah. I saw it at the drive-in so. movie theater. It was big. Um, mm -hmm. It's been turned into a musical. You're very welcome. That was just a little <laughs> piece of Ryan Lee Gilbert history. Um, the Tony-nominated writing team behind Something Rotten, a hilarious Broadway musical, will be adapting Mrs. Doubtfire for the stage. John O'Farrell and Carrie Kirkpatrick will be writing the musical's book, while Carrie and Wayne Kirkpatrick will be working on the score, and it will be directed by the legend himself four-time Tony Award winner Jerry Zachs. That is an all-star team it for is. Mrs. Doubtfire. Um, additional casting, creative members, production dates, all of that jazz is still yet to come, but Mrs. Doubtfire, the big team, is headed to hopefully Broadway very soon. All very right, exciting. it's in the works, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yay. And you guys have even more time to go see the star-studded play off-Broadway. Okay, this is called Collective Rage, a play mm -hmm. in five Betty's but I will not let this no. opportunity pass to read you <laughs> the entire title. Are yes. you ready? Are you ready, Mary Lou Henner? Yes. Okay. Oh, she's ready. <laughs> this is the title, and I'm sorry if you're offended. It's just the title. Collective Rage, a play in five Bettys, in essence, a queer and occasionally hazardous exploration. Do you, do you remember when you were in middle school and you read about Shackleton and how he explored the Antarctic? Imagine the Antarctic as a pussy, and it's sort of like that. That's the title. That now here's the news. Is an amazing. Big title. eyes all around. You're welcome. You're welcome. It's perfect. Uh, this is by Jen. Sil this is by Jen Silverman. It's at MCC, and it was originally scheduled to run through September 23rd, mm -hmm. but now it's extended, probably because of the title, maybe because so. of the all-star yeah. cast. Uh, it will now run through October 7th at the Lucille Lortel Theater. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Anna Viafanye is in it. Leah Delaria, Dana Delaney. Great, great cast. Yeah, directed amazing. by Mike Donahue. Mm -hmm. And the original pie-eating doctor is back on Broadway. <laughs> That's right. Fresh <laughs> off his world premiere run in Dave, the new musical that was in D.C., Drew Galing is back in Waitress at the Brooks Atkinson Theater. He is stepping in with Stephanie Torns, who is playing Jenna in the musical right now, because Nicolette Robinson doesn't make her Broadway debut in the show until September 4th. So he's on stage tonight. Dr. Palmer, the original, is back. Go see Waitress. Oh, yeah. Love that show. Mm-hmm. And we found out who's going to be checking audiences in at this well-known hotel. That's right, the Grand That's Hotel, right. or just Grand yes. Hotel. <laughs> the musical, which was just done by or Encores recently yeah. here in New York, is going to be done in L.A. At, for Reprise 2.0. It's going to everywhere. It's going to be done at People love Grand hotel. hotel. Maxwell Caulfield and Jonah Platt, who is our vlogger, mm -hmm. Fierro, yeah. in Wicked, Fierro That's Time, right. if you remember, <sighs> will be starring along with... Uh, Hal Linden and Sharon Lawrence. Great cast. Wow. Great cast. UCLA's Freud Playhouse from October 24th through November 4th, directed by Arthur Allen Seidelman and choreographed by Kay Cole. Go see it. It's a great show. It is. Mm -hmm. And Broadway favorites are getting together f to revamp this iconic event. Yes, Wigstock, which was a very big deal from about 1985 until 2003, and then it took a, a break, and then it was a cruise for a little bit. Well, the all it's Lady back. Bunny. It was yes. all from Lady all Bunny. Absolutely. Look it now, up. Now kids. the big thing is back, and it is because of Neil Patrick Harris and David Burtka, his husband. They have revived the event, which will happen on September 1st. Labor Day weekend at Pier 17 Rooftop at New York City's Seaport District. You have Michael Mayer, Tony winner Michael Mayer, helming the event. Mm -hmm. And lots of cool people are scheduled to perform, including Head Over Heels' Peppermint will be there, as well as Once on the Silence, Alex Newell, Justin Vivian Bond, Jinx Monsoon, Taylor Mack. Incredible people will be there. And the Gay Men's Health Crisis will serve as the event's nonprofit partner. Awesome. Amazing. Could have Lots wigs, of Broadway wig people. stock back. Yeah. And Neil Patrick Harris knows what he's talking about. Oh, yeah. The wig and the drag. A little head won a Tony action. Award for Hedwig. it. Hedwig. I like but to say uh, it with a V sound. Hedwig. Hedwig. The You're right. German. The real way. The, the real way. German. Yes. Well, that's it for well, me. Well, Ryan, yes, thank mm -hmm. you for your service. This is Mary Lou Henner. Mary Lou Henner is here. Yes. <laughs> so, thank you very much. <laughs> hey, tell us a little bit about our guest. Of course. Guys, we have Mary Lou Henner in the studio with us today, and she is back 
on Broadway as Sharon Papadopoulos and getting the band back together. She previously appeared on The Great White Way, and she's been in so many things like Grease, Over Here, Pal Joey, Social mm-hmm. Security, Chicago, and The Tale of the Allergist's Wife. And she also starred in off-Broadway production and touring productions of Annie Get Your Gun and Chicago. She also You probably also know her from her run in this small show called Taxi that she earned five Golden Globe nominations. Be sure to follow her on social media at It's Mary Lou. No, and please, it's the real Mary Lou. Oh, no, it's oh, called The, the Real Oh, it is. You're right. I have it written Lou. down like that, too, <laughs> at The Real Mary Lou. And leave all your questions in the comments down below. Everyone, please welcome Beth and Mary Lou. Hey, Lou. Hey, welcome. Hi. Nice to see you guys. Nice to yeah. see you. We're huge fans. I'm a huge oh, fan. Thank I'm, you. A little, I'm a little clumped right now because Mary Lou Henner's here. Yeah. What fun you are having, and we are all having, oh and getting gosh. the band back together. <laughs> we, every night on stage, we are just laughing. It's just, I'm either on stage or I'm changing clothes because I wear like well, nine sure. different costumes. And they're all skin the tight. And they're, they're all skin tight. <laughs> <laughs> they are. I'm just selling tickets here, people. <laughs> <laughs> but we have such a good time, and the audiences love it. And there's something for everybody in this show. My 38 year old nephew saw it the other day, and he said, Oh my gosh, this is a show about guys my age. That's and true. I just can't believe it. You know, I want to see more guys here at the audience because it's just such a great and, and he he and his his uh, the, the fiance they're like settling down so one of the songs reminded him of them and mm-hmm. you know just all these different stages of one's life you know the do over or whatever and so but it's funny 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 and you know having been trained in the sitcom world i know yeah you know from comedy sticks, yeah yeah, and you yeah. know from singing and dancing. Mm-hmm. You, I, I told you before, you look a little rock and roll today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because Sharon's, you know, used to hang out with Aerosmith. And so uh, <laughs> I, I'm, yeah, I'm one did. of those actresses who loves to be told kind of like what my character is going to be like so that then I can start dressing like it in my real life. And I sort of put that in my wardrobe so I don't feel like I get to the theater and then put something on. You That's know, I fun. Kind of feel I love it. that. I like it. Yeah. So this character, you've been working on this character for a long time, right? How yes, has it been shaped years. by you? Well, she's Greek now. She's Greek because you're your family. Because I'm Greek. Greek. I'm half Greek, half Polish. And um, she, uh, she, there's certain rhythms that I have as a person that they've definitely adapted the story. And they added more of the mom stuff. They didn't change the way I bake to like being vegan, but you know, I, I have to say. like, we'll get I to mean, we'll fluff or nutter. I serve fluff or nutters and popcorn balls. And Your things sons like have that. never had anything like that in their lives. No way. My boys have never even had a cheeseburger or a glass of milk. Right. So I read yeah. your books. I know yeah. your stuff. So in case you don't know, thing. Mary Lou Henner has what, 10 books? 10. 10, ten, ten books, books. Many of them about health mm-hmm. and fitness and non-dairy Right. She's the queen. Non-dairy. She's the queen of non-dairy. Time. Yeah, queen of non-dairy. I'm queen of <laughs> non-dairy and queen of discontinued. I, um, discontinued. I I love discontinued. I pick a product and then it like it doesn't exist after so I go it, to pick get it again. So, so I have to buy in bulk. It, it's gone. It's over. That's yeah. how it goes. That's how it goes. But in this show, you're kind of a sugar pusher. Yeah. But I figured I was making it for Aerosmith back in the day, but probably put a little other good stuff in Sharon's it. Sharon's kind of a former groupie. Is that fair to say? Um, Is that Traveling rude? rock enthusiast. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, she's a, a woman with a crazy past who settled down with a nice guy in Sayreville, New Jersey, had this son. The son took the CPA route. Like, you know, he became a stockbroker. Kind of my husband was in finance. And now my, my husband passed away four years before the piece. And, and uh, now my son loses his job on Wall Street. So he has to come back and live with me. And I'm so happy because I get to hang out with his friends again. And uh, as the mother of two boys who are in their early 20s, I, I was always the mom that was doing the cooking and everybody slept in my house and everybody hung out at mm-hmm. our house and stuff. So it, it feels like a really comfortable character for me. So back in the day, were you ever a not traveling rock enthusiast, but who were you a super fan of when you were younger? Oh, not even just younger. Well, oh, I, mean, well, 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 well <laughs> I just meant, you know, because okay. this is in her past. Just so you know, I had like an out-of-body experience once on The Tonight Show because Sting was on. Oh. And I got ready for that appearance when I found out he was going to be on the show with me. I got ready for it. It, with more consideration than I did for any of my three weddings, <laughs> believe me. And it was as if a 13-year-old girl crawled through her TV set to meet her idol. I mean, I was like smelling him. I was like what taking things from like? his dress. Non-dairy. He was non-dairy. <laughs> he smells and, non-dairy. He smells non-dairy. And I was, you know, making crazy comments and stuff. It was. I mean, I, you know, I, I ran into him a year later and I said, oh, I'm so sorry and everything. He said, no, 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 that's okay. The restraining or- order is over. <laughs> <laughs> it was really well, we're, sure, we're sure you're watching Sting and we're sorry. Yes. No. Sorry. No, we love we him. We love I love him. him. Yeah. So I, I would say probably right at the top is Sting. 
I want to I want to say I interviewed you when you were about to go on tour for Annie Get Your Gun. Yeah, in 2000. 2000. That's a long time ago. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I asked you if you had any special talents and you told me you I could, could get my fist in my mouth. That's what she said to me and yeah. then you did it on opening night for broadway.com. You can go on broadway.com. Picture, and we have a picture and see of the it. Picture. You do. No. <laughs> What's funny <laughs> is I said I my son <laughs> send it. He said this is on social media. What were you thinking? <laughs> he said I said he said why are you and I said, "Oh, do you think it's quirky?" He went Quirky. Mom, you are the definition of quirky, you know, so. <laughs> All right, we haven't talked about your memory yet. Yeah. You have a very special memory. Hyper? No, they don't call it that I'm anymore. Sorry. Okay, it's tell been me what they're called. Change. Oh, good. No, oh, they call it change. highly superior autobiographical memory. Highly oh. superior. H-Sam. You're highly superior in many it. ways. No. And your memory is one of them. So I don't, I'm not going to give you the party trick of it, giving you okay. dates, but I want to know what your first, what your Broadway debut was. What was the date? Oh, it was, uh, it was, um, uh, uh, um. No, I know. It was <laughs> she was I, I didn't It was it over up. here. It was over here. Yeah. And it when was, was uh, it? what year March was it? 19, oh, 74. 74. Oh, obviously, 74. So it was yeah. March. March, March 6th. <gasps> March 6th. Right? That's amazing. Oh. I didn't look it up. I didn't oh, look it up. We you. trust you. you. Oh, you It's not a quiz. I'm just wondering what your Broadway debut was and what it felt yeah. like for you to because you were a long-time theater person, play person, grease person. We'll I that. never thought I would do anything else. I never thought that I would do anything but be on stage in a musical or in a play and would never do film or go out to Los Angeles or anything. And so this, because this was my first love. Mm-hmm. You know, because this was like my first big love. What instilled this love of musical theater? Well, yeah. I grew up in a dancing school. My family right. had a dancing school in our backyard. I mean, we lived in a lower middle class neighborhood in Chicago, which is so hipster groovy now, Logan Square. <laughs> I should have <laughs> saved the house I and mean, kept the house. But it, well, we had this fake garage in the backyard. Um, and we had, you know, I always say it was 200 students between the ages of 2 and 80, including the nuns who came over for stretch classes. Oh, wow. Amazing. So it was really a that's, lot of fun. That's a visual image right there. Yeah. I also saw you in Chicago, and what I loved about your Roxy heart was you sounded like you were from Chicago. <laughs> it, was, it was a Roxy that sounded like a real Chicago person. Yes, because, I know. Because, because you are. I'm from Chicago. <laughs> and I can really do a Chicago accent if I have to. I mean, that's like when I was in school, when I went to Madonna High school this is how we all talked when we were from madonna you know but that so that's a real chicago but and yeah roxy my roxy had chicago, some she has yeah. a little chicago inflection There's some all of right, that. we have loads of questions so caitlin take yes. it away oh my okay. gosh yes please okay so it says you are a lot like your character and being a mom but what is the most different between you and sharon um she's a little messier than i am She's definitely a little bit. <laughs> if you look at like, Mary Lou's books, you see her closet, you see her refrigerator, you see everything. So you're very organized. I'm very organized. I like organization. I kind of, my kids, when they were little and they wanted to stay up late, they'd say, Mommy, we'll help you organize something. You know, they're trying to say that people with HSAM have like uh, OCD, but we, I don't. I've been tested for it and stuff. I call it OCO. Obsessive compulsive order. It's not order. a disorder. No, it's, it's like, but I do like organization. But you know, when you're one of six kids and your bedroom is right off the kitchen and there's no door, so you're a little girl that everybody can look in and you can watch me sleep. Um, mm. You know, it's like you okay, don't you got to keep a clean room. Got to mm-hmm. be organized. And my other sister would pay me to keep the room uh, rooms clean. So I would. I had like a business. It's five. Six, seven years oh, old. Oh, I love this. Yeah. What are some unusual things you like to organize? Oh, I love to, well, I like clothes and shoes. Mm-hmm. You know, I love to, I, Color anything, code. spices alphabetically, because then you know exactly where to grab them. Um, anything, anything can be organized. You this know, is good. I always learn something from you. And comedy <laughs> is cold. That's the other thing I learned from Mary Lou Henner today. Comedy, comedy is, cold. is cold. 52 degrees at Letterman, and Burt Reynolds had 52 degrees on our set at Evening Shade. Because you're more likely to laugh if you're freezing. You're more uh, likely to laugh, and it just keeps people awake. Yes, oh, might have okay. had something to do with hair too. But <laughs> yes, <yeah, so laughs> no, we, we haven't even gotten to Celebrity Apprentice. We'll get to that. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> Caitlin, give us another. Question. Yeah, sure. Caitlin asks, "What are your favorite snacks to bring to the cast?" Oh, oh, oh that's a great. Okay, uh, first of all, I, I'm, I'm I love nuts, so I'm always like eating nuts, bringing nuts, having doing things like that. Guacamole, I Ooh. love to make guacamole and chips. We're having a, a bake off. This not a bake off, you know, like a potluck. Potluck. And I'm gonna make a big thing of guacamole on sa- Saturday matinee. Um, but I haven't been able to do as much cooking because I'm not in like you're not in your own home. I'm not in my own home, so mm-hmm. I don't have all my pots and pans and everything else. But I love to cook. I I mean I was I my our house was the house that. After prom, 
the prom bus would bring the kids to my house so they could all change and eat something before they went to like the next after party. You know, I, I love, love to feed a lot of people. I, I like to feed a lot of people. <laughs> you can bring a food lot. here. Yeah, I yes, can bring food here. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Okay. Ooh, what is it like handing out Rice Krispie treats? Well, they <laughs> asked me to do that. I do that at the intermission. I mean, I say Hail Mary over them before I do it because they're not <laughs> vegan. But, but, but. Do you I, admonish them for taking them? No, like, don't take, no. Oh, right. I make sure the kid. No, I don't like. Yeah. I, I'm not into any kind of like health no, shaming or whatever. Shaming. No, 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 no. Listen, my arm is getting pretty good because the first night I hit somebody right in the head. So now I Watch didn't want to like throw members. them. But now I'm getting better at throwing them because people ask me to like they, you know, put their hand up and I think, can I get it there? Okay, I can. Okay. So oh, that's, that's a great question. <laughs> I love that. I love it. Okay. Ooh, is there anything that you did? Because it's improv. Like it started mm -hmm. as an improv. Is there anything that you improv that is now in the show? Um, I'm trying to think if there's any. Oh, necessity is the mother of invention. Because sometimes mm -hmm. something happens. All right. Literally, because we were a new show, there were scenes that all of a sudden, chop, 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 they got rid of. And I said, mm -hmm. I am never going to make that costume change. Now this, this chunk of scene is taken out of I'm sort of giving something away. But let's suffice it to say that because of a wardrobe necessity, we found one of our best bits in the second act. Say no more. Yeah. I think I, I know like what you're talking about. Intriguing. Yes. It's intriguing. intriguing. I Isn't love it. it. A little bit of mystery. Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> let's do one more question. And what is your favorite like moment in the show that gets always gets a big laugh from the audience? Oh, well, I mean, it's funny. Uh, there's a line that I, that I don't say, but it's one of Bart's, Jay Clates's, who's so fabulous. Mm -hmm. he, he says the line, and I can always tell what kind of audience we're going to have. I'm about to open the door, and I can always tell what kind of audience we're going to have from the way they respond to his laugh, so I can kind of gauge what the audience will do. <laughs> but in terms of my, oh, well, my, I think probably my biggest laugh, or one of the biggest laughs, and I can always tell what the audience is going to think, too, is when I say, so your mom was into S&M, so what? <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I say that. Yeah, my boys, my real life boys, were there were a couple moments in the show, they were like, oh, you know, wow. our mom. I mean, that's I good. That's I think good. you have children to grow up and embarrass them. So um, That's great news it. for me. Yeah. <laughs> now, you have been away from Broadway for a while. What Makes made you want to do this show? You know what? Um, I got offered it in the strangest way possible. On um, March the 24th of 2014, I was at the Mothers and Sons uh, opening night, and I walked in front of the, like, you know, down the... Red carpet? Across. No, 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 it wasn't oh. even red carpet. I was sitting on the aisle in the center section, oh, okay. and I noticed somebody on the other aisle, so I walked kind of down and around and then back to my seat, and Ken Davenport was in the audience, and he said, that's our Sharon. So oh. he called me the next day and offered me the job, and I did a couple of workshops of it. And there was something that spoke to me. I think it was the mom part, mm -hmm. the mom of boys, a boy um, cooking, singing, kind of that rocker thing. It was just such a fun character. And, you know, you, you get so tired of women being so, like, weepy on stage. <laughs> I mean, there are a lot of, you know, or like, oh, honey, you know, that kind of part. So I really, I wanted to play this part. I feel like you don't play weepy parts very much. Um, you nice. know what's You're fun to play? Strong. A villain. Oh. I played a villain in a in a TV movie called The Governor's Wife. I was so crazy. But villains have energy. You mm -hmm. know, they have like energy because their minds are always working. Yeah, there was one actress. She was so bad. She must have been sleeping with somebody. I couldn't wait to kill her. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I put her out of the audience's misery. It was like, oh, this scene is, I don't need any motivation. Bye-bye. <laughs> I shouldn't say that in this day and age about shooting people. But you know what I'm saying? It was mm -hmm. like, yeah. Yeah, and you're wife. once again surrounded by guys. You've done that a lot in I your know. career. You taxi, taxi, Roxy, you know. Roxy, sure. Lots yeah. of boys framing you. Mm -hmm. Something you like to have around you, huh? Uh, well, no, I'm <laughs> very close to my sisters and yeah, all my girlfriends true. You've got a big and family. stuff. Big family, but um, but yeah, it seems to be kind of a running theme. So it's it's a lot of fun to to play this part with the guys. You know, guys are so. They're great. They're great. <laughs> All They're right, so guys, fun. go see Mary Lou Henner in oh, getting the band you. back together. Kate, take us on out. Of course. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single day on Facebook, and you can listen to this interview in a podcast form by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button to stay up to date in all the biggest Broadway news and interviews. Be sure to tune in tomorrow when we talk to Red Concepcion of the Miss Saigon National Tour.